Welcome to the Cunningham Piano Show, where we explore life between the keys. I'm your host, Hugh Sung, and in this episode, I am so honored to welcome a phenomenal pianist. His name is Dr. Shun Pond. Dr. Pond, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. What Pleasure a, to be here. Oh my goodness. It, it is such an honor to have you here. Now, Dr. Pond, you are the head of the Keyboard Studies Program at Millersville University, but you are also very active all around the world. You're, you're judging competitions, you're performing, and as we were talking a little bit before the shoot, you're also traveling back and forth to China very, very frequently. So I was wondering, first of all, if you could share a little bit about your upbringing. I understand you studied in Beijing initially, is that correct? And you had yes. pianists. Your, piano, your parents were also pianists. So tell me a little bit about, it sounds like the piano was part of your earliest memories. Well, it's not too early. <laughs> i tell you why. I started my piano uh, studying when I was nine. Okay. You're kidding. If you are talking about uh, kids today, yes. I mean, you, you, a teacher probably think you're too late. I tell you why I started when I was nine, because mm. that was during the Cultural Revolution in China. Ah. So both okay. my parents. So help me out, help us understand. Okay. For some of us who may be ah. younger, mm -hmm. who may not know some of the history, the history of yeah. the Cultural Revolution, tell us a little bit about so that. The uh, Cultural Revolution uh, in China happened between 1966 uh, for 10 years until 1976. Mm. That was uh, started by Mao Zedong at this time, uh, the chairman of China. And basically, he was trying to put all the educators uh, to the farm. So during that, those 10 years, all universities, college were closed mm. in China. There was no schools at that time. Uh, so both my parents, like you mentioned, they are pianists. They are professors at Central Conservatory uh, of Music in oh Beijing. My, oh my. So they both were put in the uh, in labor camp. They were actually in a separate camp, male camp and female camp. Oh and you, 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 if you look at history, you can find so many different stories that time. There are so many people got killed, commit suicide. Luckily, my parents survived. However, when they came, came back, I was already nine. So I started my piano uh, studying kind of late, if you consider how early kids start today. Mm. And then, um, uh, of course, uh, my parents, I grew up with my grandparents in Shanghai. And then when I went back to Beijing, my parents came back. And so at the time, I really didn't know them well. So all they asked me to do is force me to practice. Because that time, uh, after your high school, you're supposed to go to the countryside, the farm, far away to do works. But every family could only save one child to be with parents. So my parents were thinking, if I learn something, it might be somewhere they need a pianist, then I don't have to go to the farm. You know. In a way, the piano was their strategy to save your life. Exactly, exactly. That was the strategy, number one. So, but I could not understand when I was at that age. They could not even tell me that time because they're afraid that I'm going out and say something not proper. Then they will be put in the jail. And, and this is also a time when children were reporting their parents, exactly reporting their relatives to the authorities. You understand the, the history, right? So. And I didn't know them that well. So at that time, I'm thinking, who are you forcing me to? Because I want to go outside, play soccer, or with my friends. No, I have to practice piano. So at this one time, I really hated piano. I hated, just simply hated. Then, of course, you know, when, when I'm a little bit older, um, I got into the middle school and high school version of the Central Conservatory, then continued my college in Central Conservatory. And then after that, I came here and got my master's degree at Syracuse University and got my doctorate at Rutgers. Now, that, that's, a, okay. that's, <laughs> so that's, a, that's a huge change. <laughs> that's a huge change. But you've gone through several cultural changes in your life. Yes, I did. The Chinese Cultural Revolution. Of course, right. then the cultural changes coming to this country. That must right. have been very 
disorienting for you in many ways. It, you know? it, it, it was very difficult. And, um, and I was not going to come to this country. I wasn't going to go to Russia, actually. What made you come here instead of Russia? Well, that's another big story. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, I was finishing my college in Beijing, and the government decided to send me to Moscow Conservatory for my graduate study, which is my dream school, right? Mm -hmm. Either Juilliard or Moscow Conservatory. Two phenomenal so, choices, so, sure. So, and I was so happy, and I know exactly who I want to study with. Marlening that time, it was a huge name, and he went to Beijing. Mm. He, he heard me playing and liked me. So I was just studying Russian and ready to go, right? The same time, that was in 1989. I don't know if you remember what happened, the Tiananmen Square incident. Yes, 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 this is the great. And I was in the square. <gasps> As so if, a if you, student. If you don't mind, recount for those of us, again, for, who are maybe not as familiar. Right. This was a pivotal yeah. moment. It was. That was time, I think, uh, Chinese start to open their door yes. to the world. And as, of course, a youngster, um, college kids, right? You, 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 you really want to free. You want to, you want to change the world. Change. Yeah. Not, right. Change the country first, mm, then mm, change the mm. world. So we trying to say things to the government that, you know, certain things they did wrong and such and things. Then it ends up that uh, they shot the students and civilians at the time. So again, if you want to look at for the history, that you can find a lot of stories around that time. So I was in the square and I look at the whole thing. Luckily, I, 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 I know the small alley really well, so I, I wasn't caught. But I was really disappointed. So I'm telling myself I'm not going to go to Russia because then I have to go back to China. So that's how I end up here. Mm. <laughs> Different, mm. different, very different. Well, then yeah. when, so then when I came here, I didn't speak any word in oh English. I don't know anything in English. So it took me several years, really difficult to go through the schools. Imagine, my first time, saw a computer <laughs> in 1990. So a lot of, you know, things changed. And the internet was just being born there. So you were really witness Right. The sum of the most pivotal right, right. epical so. <laughs> changes in the world, and you're a musician. Well, yeah, so I was lucky, I guess. Um, so I went through my student life, then uh, I got a job, and here I am here. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pan, I, it's one of the things I find so compelling is the stories that artists share. Mm -hmm. And not just, you know, the artists, their successes, but really the, the, what they struggled through. Mm -hmm. Because that is where true artistry, I believe, is born. It's from our suffering. It's from the tragedies we face. And uh, Dr. Pan, I, I'm so moved by your story. And I'm sure that you must have a singular mission for your students that you teach. Tell me some of the things that you try to convey to a lot of the students that have not experienced the hardships that you've experienced. Right, so that's uh, one mission in my life that, number one, I do not want my children or students I'm teaching went through what I went through, right? I, I, I hope them always have a happy life. Mm. But learning the world today we are so lucky to live here. And there were so many places in the world that think about they go in the war or, you know, any things they could imagine that also the youngest life I, I had yes. when I was younger. So that's number one. Number two, since then, you know, China opened the door and their economy bloomed. They're just so booming so much. And it's the second largest economy in the world today. So, and then I actually start to go back to China 
Was it difficult the first few times going back to China? No. Hmm. I just felt like right went back to home. Even though the lifestyle is different, but it doesn't bother me as then. I, it, it make, and, and what I wanted to do is to bring kids from China to here, mm. to see the world, to have their education, and I bring actually people from here to China, and I want them to see the changes mm. what China had. Mm. I also want them to learn other cultures, because I think more you know the world, the peace we get. That's, that's something I'm hoping I can do. So I, I've been traveling back and forth every year, teaching master classes, performing in China, and also um, I'm the artist director of the Lancaster International Piano Festival, mm. which this year is our seventh edition. Oh, wonderful. And, and you have quite a number of students that come from all over the world. That is true. Festival. That is true. Now, I remember the first year we only got 35 participants, but recent years we got 80. Oh, my goodness. And uh, from one year, I remember we had participants from 12 different countries across the Europe, Asia, and even South America. That's amazing. So I, I'm truly, truly uh, thankful that I could have this opportunity to serve the youngsters, mm -hmm. that for them to to explore the, the the wonderful music. Because all the artists we invite for concerts and master classes, they are absolutely uh, world top mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. um, think about the Yamaha artists like Alex Colburn, Claire Huang. So they are the younger generation. Everyone knows, but. At the same time, uh, I was also bringing like um, Boris Berman, Peter Frankel, uh, th these people to the festival and giving concerts and giving master class. So this is something I continue doing and I, I really enjoy uh, that I could do this. Now you have some wonderful pieces that you're going to play for us. I understand some Chopin, but also something from your home country. That tell, is true. Tell, me, that tell is us a little true. bit about what you plan to play for us. Right. Um, uh, I'm going to play you a, a Chopin etude, mm -hmm. the Revolution etude. It's, it's a very popular tune that everyone knows. But of um, course, you having lived through several I have, especially learning how Chopin wrote these music while he was running away from the Russians during the wartime. Um, this piece must have a very it, it, It's meaning. actually speaks a lot, the uh, meaning to me. Uh, and I also want to play a Chinese music for you because mm -hmm. I think uh, as a Chinese, I, I also have a mission that I want to promote Chinese music mm. to the world. Um, so everywhere I go, doesn't matter if it's solo or chamber music, always I'm bringing a Chinese music in my program. Now everywhere. Who is, who is the composer of this piece? The composer name is Chen Peixun. Chen Peixun. Chen Peixun actually, it's, it's one of my parents' colleagues. Oh, wonderful. They went to school together. They, uh, they taught uh, in the same school. And the piece called the autumn moon over the plastic lake. How would I say that in Chinese? In Chinese, it's called Ping Hu Qiu Yue. Ping Hu Qiu Yue. Beautiful word. It, it oh, is, it is. And it's a folk tune from Cantonese. Ah. And because I am a Cantonese. Ah, I see. Okay. And uh, uh, so I would want to, it, it's truly a beautiful piece. And it always speaks to me uh, when I'm. I want a peaceful war for myself after a whole day or a whole month or a whole year. Busy time, I sit there and I play this. It gives me a lot of comfort mm. for my own, I mean, soul work. This is so, sort of things like. Well, I'm, let's, let's hear you play these amazing pieces. Thank you.
Dr. Pan, I, I feel a lifetime of experience through your performance. S suffering, tragedy, and yet great beauty, and a wonder of the world through all that you've experienced. That, that Chinese work by Chen Peishun, did I say his name correctly? Chen Peishun, yeah, you're absolutely right. Oh my God, it, it, it's almost like a, a beautiful mix of, of Debbie Saint Ravel, and yet right. much more authentic. Because yeah. I know those French composers tried to write an oriental style, but this is right. much more genuine. And just for me, it speaks to my heart. I love that work. And the Chopin felt so personal. You know, not Thank just, you. Uh, you know, many people play just to play, you know, the right, but you, it almost felt like you were really experiencing the battles that you've suffered through your life, through that Thank work. You. I'm so moved by your performances. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, I understand you have some very ambitious things coming up oh. in your future. I wouldn't know <laughs> if you don't mind sharing some of these amazing projects. Well, yes, as I mentioned earlier to you that because in two years, it's Beethoven's 250 uh, birth celebration. And everywhere in this world, it's going to be a huge celebration. Sure. So the Wear Center in Lancaster, PA, booked me for the entire 32 Beethoven piano sonatas. <laughs> Over how many concerts? Or I'm going to play all these 32 sonatas in 10 concerts. That's a huge, that's, that's like the Mount Everest <laughs> of piano playing, wow. But that's not all, but in, uh, from this year, I'm starting to play with a violinist, Simon Maurer. Mm -hmm. We're going to play the entire 10 piano violin sonatas. And you said it correctly. It's piano violin, not violin. Piano, it's piano violin. That sonata. was actually from <laughs> Beethoven's writing. That's right, yes. Sonata yes, yes. for piano <laughs> and violin. And also in May of 2020, I'm playing the entire Beethoven piano cello works. Oh my goodness. <laughs> with a wonderful cellist, Emilio Colon from Indiana University in Bloomington. Um, so this is my next two years project. 47 sonatas and three variations. Dr. Pan, I hope uh, <laughs> during Beethoven celebration year, you'll come back and share some of that Beethoven. I definitely would, would love, love to. to. Oh, thank again, you. thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, and thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe so that we can let you know whenever we have new episodes. For the Cunningham Piano Show, I'm Hugh Sung. Thank you for spending time with us, and we'll see you next time.